Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we're talking about the random forest and the intuition behind it. And specifically we're going to be talking about the random forest applied to regression trees rather than classification trees this time. But the concept is very similar and you'll find that this tutorial is very similar to the one for the random forest on classification trees. All right, so random forest and ensemble learning. Ensemble learning, so random forest is a version of ensemble learning. You've got other uh, versions such as gradient boosting and ensemble learning is when you take multiple algorithms or the same algorithm multiple times and you put them together to make something much more powerful than the original and let's see how this works so you pick a random k data points from your training set so now we're kind of going to leverage a lot what we talked about in the section on uh, regression trees. So you remember there we had lots of uh, data points and then we built a regression tree and uh, or we built a decision tree and used that to uh, forecast the value that would be assigned or the y value for any uh, new element that would be added to our data set as the average in the terminal leaves basically. So here what we're doing is we're using the whole data set we had and we're only picking k data points from that training set then we're going to build a decision tree associated to these k data points. Rather than building a decision tree based on everything in your data set, you're just building a decision tree based on those data points that you select, so a subset of your data set. Then you choose the number of trees that you want to build and you repeat steps one and two. So you just keep building and building and building these trees, so you're building a lot of regression decision trees. And then finally, you're going to use all of them to predict. So for a new data point, make each one of your entries predict the value of y for the data point in question and assign the new data point the average across all of the predicted y values. So basically, instead of just getting one prediction, you're getting lots of predictions. By default, usually these algorithms are set to about 500 trees at least. So you're getting 500 predictions for the value of y and then you're taking the average across those. And in that way, uh, you're not just predicting based on one tree, but predicting on based on a forest of trees. And that improves uh, the accuracy of your prediction because it is uh, you're taking the average of many predictions and therefore even if one is uh, some for, for instance somehow uh, one of the decision trees was built exactly perfectly because the way of those data points were selected so it just didn't turn out as a perfect tree or a great tree even. Uh, if you were using it by itself, you'd get a bad prediction. But because you're using the average, it is less likely. So you're going to get a more accurate prediction. And more. And the second thing is that they're more stable. Algorithms like this, uh, ensemble algorithms, are more stable because any changes in your data set could really impact one tree. But to for them to uh, really impact a forest of trees, it's much harder. So therefore, ensemble is uh, much more powerful in that way. And what this reminds me of is the game that is often played at fairs or parties and things like that, where you have a jar and inside this jar there's lots and lots of, for instance, jelly beans or it could be marbles or there could be like a huge net with balloons inside it. And uh, we have one uh, in the mall sometimes where there's lots of balloons inside a net at, in the ceiling and you need to guess how many balloons there are and whoever guesses will get like a car, can win a car. And so it's like a crazy prize for just guessing number of balloons. And although this is a, not an example of specifically a uh, random forest, a regression random forest method, uh, it's still an example of an ensemble type of method. So the best way or one of the ways to beat that game when you need to guess a number of marbles in a jar, for instance, is not to actually go and guess, but it's actually to get a pen and a paper and stand next to the person that's holding this jar or that's conducting this event. And you just stand next to them and then you wait for other people to come and guess. Every time somebody guesses, you just ask them as soon as they're like, yes, and they're walking away, you ask them, hey, uh, because usually they write down their number and they put it in inside a uh, like an envelope or something, and then there is the winner is announced later on. 
So they don't know whether it gets right or wrong. But regardless of that, they're walking away and you just ask them, hey, what number did you guess? And you just write down their number. And then the next person guesses and you write their number down and you write their number and you keep writing the numbers down and uh, you just keep doing that until you have like a substantial number of uh, entries, maybe 100 or maybe if it's a very popular contest and people are guessing like crazy, like uh, trying to attempt or attempting the, the guessing, then you, you might even get like couple of hundred or even if you're very determined you might get a thousand of entries over a couple of days and then what you do is you just average them out or if you don't want maybe maybe you take the median if you don't want outliers like people just guessing random numbers like one or five million uh so you don't want them to affect or you just take the outliers out and then you average out anyway you, you either average it out or you take the median and statistically speaking you have a much higher likelihood of being closer to the truth if you take the average of people, because people are natural beings and their kind of visual perception will be most likely normally distributed. And therefore, you once you hit the middle of that normal distribution, you are more likely to be on the money than any one of them. And that's a pretty cool concept that that's an example of an ensemble method where you're taking, instead of just performing that guess by yourself or taking the guess of one individual person, you're averaging out across multiple guesses and you're more likely to be the closest one to the truth. And if the prize is given not just to the person that gets spot on, but to the person that gets closest to the truth, then you've, you've got yourself a very powerful advantage uh, using uh, data science. So uh, if, you, if you have the patience and determination, then try it out next time you see one of these games and uh, see how you go. Would love to hear back from you because I never have the patience to stand there and just count. But it is uh, it is a statistical approach to a challenge like that. So hopefully you enjoyed today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy machine learning.